Hey everyone! Today in episode 5, we're gonna finish up modeling Kakashi. Let's get to it! Okay, hair time! I figured now was as good a time as any to make use of some curves. In top orthographic view, shift A to add a bezier curve. Select this handle and rotate it by 45 degrees. Scale this handle by something like 1.42, or just delete it and screw out another handle. Now position these handles something like this, and scale them down to fit his head. Select a point over here, out of the way. And in object mode, set origin to 3D cursor. Shift A to add a plane. In object mode, rotate, and in edit mode, scale it down. Add something like 6 edge loops with Ctrl R and mouse wheel. In the modifier tab, add a curve modifier, select the bezier curve as the object, and X should be fine. Grab the plane on the X axis and drag it until it's more or less in the middle. You can see the position of the curve better now, so select the curve and move it to where you want it. I want the plane to line up with where his hair will hang down from the back of his head. With it in place, select the plane and tab into edit mode. Move it up on the Z axis. With face select active, select and duplicate this face and this face. Select one of the in-between faces and hit Ctrl L to select the original plane, then delete it. In edge select, select the top edges and drag them down. Then select these two edges and scale them on the X axis. I think this is about the right size, so I select all with A and in top ortho view, extrude them forward. Add a few edge loops in. Select and delete the top and bottom faces. Turn on proportional editing and switch the sharp fall off. Select the bottom edge loop and scale by zero to shape it something like this. And the same over here. Add in a few more edge loops. Now select an entire hair tendril thing and duplicate it. Randomly position them around, making sure to roughly line up edge loops. You can scale these hair pieces on the X axis to vary the size. If you want to overlap hair pieces, add edge loops down the middle as well. Position the bezier curve as you see fit. If your hair object doesn't line up nicely, just move it on the X axis until it does. I'm going to copy one of these hair pieces and leave it up here in case I need one later. And then continue filling in his hair. Make some wider and place some lower. If you have trouble seeing your hair, try disabling the shoulder object's visibility. I'm going to open up another window, like we did during the face, so that I don't have to jump back and forth so much. With circle select, grab the sides of two of the hair pieces like so, and hit F3 to search for bridge edge loops. If you want to not have to search for bridge edge loops every time, click the edge menu at the top of the viewport window. Find bridge edge loops in the drop down menu. Right click it and select add to quick favorites. Now all you have to do is hit Q and select bridge edge loops. Also, make sure merge is checked. This is a handy feature. Now just go through and merge these pieces up. Circle select these upper vertices and delete them. In edge mode, find and delete any of these stray edges. With proportional editing on, enable connected only if more stuff moves than you want, and we're going to give his hair some character by dragging stuff around. Select the spare piece and duplicate it. Scale it down on the Y axis. Duplicate and place in a few overlapping pieces. Circle select these upper vertices and delete them. Use circle select to select the vertices we want to merge, and then deselect anything on the sides not near each other. In this case we have 18 vertices on each object selected, and then bridge edge loops. Delete these spare edges. Select these two rows of faces and invert selection with Ctrl I. Hide everything with H. Select the two top edges and pull them towards the hair object. Alt-H will unhide everything. Use a smooth proportional fall off. Maybe grab the edges and double tap G to edge slide them over. And then do that again with the other hair pieces. Feel free to add edge loops and shift stuff around as you go. I select these two hair pieces as well as an extra vertex and hit Ctrl I to invert selection and H to hide. So now you can shape these rows of faces however you want and you know where the rest of the faces are located. 
If the bottom vertices separate, use circle select and wireframe mode to select them all, and scale them by zero to place them on top of each other again. If you want to flatten the tops of these pieces out, switch pivot point to active element, select these six vertices, and this one that's in line with the main hair object, scale down on the Y axis with a fairly large fall off. And then give it some waviness. Now bridge merge to the last piece, making sure any stray edges and vertices on the top are deleted, and shape it however you want. We're going to be making a lot of hair pieces for the top of his head, so it's probably best to make a new collection for the hair. Make sure you have this new collection selected, right click somewhere over here, shift A to add a bezier curve. In top ortho view, rotate this side by 45 degrees, and scale it up so it's close to the same size as the other one, 1.42 or so. A to select all, and scale down. I want my origin to be at the base of the curve, so select this point, hit shift S, cursor to select it. And, under the object menu, set origin to 3D cursor. Name this object something like hair strand. In object mode, shift A, add another bezier curve. Scout down and position it along with the first curve. Select the original curve. Under the curve tab, scroll down to geometry. Set the depth to 1. Set the taper object to the second bezier curve. Apply scale on both curves. Position and scale the taper curve to make the original curve look how you want it. Now it's just a whole lot of copying this hair strand curve, positioning and shaping each strand as you go. This part is a bit of work and takes some time to fine tune. The main goal is to get something that closely matches how his hair looks in the anime, while making sure his head is entirely filled in. He has a few hair pieces that kind of dangle down over his headband. Feel free to add segments to your curves as needed. Try to imagine how the top of the head is shaped and make sure the hair takes up all that space. Another thing to note before you get too far is that I have my curve resolution set to 4 and my shape resolution set to 12 for each strand, which makes every strand a couple of hundred vertices. So if you're using your model for fan art like I am, this is completely fine. But if you want to make some sort of game character and have geometry restrictions, you can reduce these resolutions. Every bevel resolution that you drop reduces the curve circumference by two vertices down to four at a resolution of zero. With my finished model, well over half, like two-thirds of his geometry, is just in his hair. Now, let's make his front pockets. Select the shirt object, tab into edit mode. Select this face, shift D to duplicate, and P to separate it into its own object. Tab into object mode, select this new object, and tab into edit mode. Delete the modifiers for now. Well, maybe leave the mirror on. Position and scale this plane, kinda jam it into his chest. Wireframe mode might help, extrude forward on the Y axis. Shape this box however you want the pockets to look. Add an edge loop down the middle, so that we can add a slight curve to the pockets. Apply a subdivision modifier once again, and add some edge loops with Ctrl R to sharpen the edges. Edge slide and move stuff around as needed.
Click his booty. Add a cube. In edit mode, select all and scale it down. Scale on the Y axis by 0.5. Add a subdivision modifier. Add some edge loops. Grab these corner edges and scale them slightly. Select these side edges and scale them on the X axis. Basically, just make this thing pouch shaped. If you know what pouch shaped is, do that. <laughs> Again, if you have geometry limits, leave this pack as is and do the rest with textures. If not, select the entire upper half of this object and duplicate it with Shift D. And then, separate this object by selection with P. Open this new object up in edit mode and slide it up on the Z axis. Now delete the sides. Turn on snapping to faces and scale these edges by zero on the X axis. Select these vertices and grab them so that they snap onto a face. Turn snapping off and drag these vertices away from the pack a tiny bit. Double tap G to edge slide these vertices. Select most of these vertices back here and delete them. Now add a solidify modifier, adjust the thickness, and add a subdivision modifier. Shape this flap however you want to. Click here to move the cursor and add a UV sphere. Use 8 and 8 as the segments and rings. If you added the sphere in edit mode like I did, select it and use P to separate it. Then in object mode, select the sphere object and delete the modifiers. Set the origin to geometry and rotate it by 90 on the X axis. Maybe scale it a bit on the Y axis. When you're happy with everything, select the pack, flap, and button in object mode, position and scale it. Shift A, add a cube. In edit mode, scale by 0.2 on the X and Y axis. S shift Z, 0.2. Scale it a little bit on the Y axis and place it on his leg. If you want to limit your geometry, leave it like this and texture it, or potentially sculpt and bake some normals. We can go over that in the future. But otherwise, add a subdivision modifier. Do all the edge loops, smooth shade. Select the top faces and duplicate them. Select the front edge and extrude it out inside ortho view to make it round the corner. Select this lid with Ctrl L and hit Alt E to extrude along normals. Add in some edge loops. Now make the button exactly how we did for the other pack. As always, shade smooth. I did some child of object constraints, but it'll be pointless once we rig, so don't do it. <laughs> Take the time to name all your objects. Select the pants object and tab into edit mode, apply the mirror modifier. Add an edge loop, and then two more in between to divide this area into three equal parts. Select the middle loop of faces, duplicate, and separate into a new object. Ignore the other things I did to the faces around here, I ended up deleting them. Add a solidify modifier, and adjust its thickness so that it has some depth. Then, apply the solidify. Select these edges and maybe bevel them. Put an edge loop here to give them a neat. Select the four back edges and hit X, select delete edge loops. Do the same on the other leg. I'm not sure if I explained this on the fingers or not, but sometimes it's nice to collapse geometry on the back side of the joints. This is a low poly solution to help your geometry deform nicely when rigged. Also, his thumb's joint is way off. Edge slide these loops individually. That's maybe a little closer to where it should be. Now make this little hand plate. Add a couple edge loops and place the plate on his hand. Turn on snapping, grab the entire object in top ortho view, and snap it to the hand. Add a solidify modifier, recalculate normals. Change the thickness of the solidify, add a subdivision modifier, and some edge loops. Smooth shape. Add a mirror modifier, and use the chest as the mirror object. The last thing to do is the headband plane. Click about where you want to place the plate on the headband, shift A to add a plane. Rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis, scale it down to match a reference. Add a middle edge loop and then a couple more on each side. Select all and extrude forward. Select the back and scale it. Add a simple deform, change the axis to Z. Make sure your object has all transformations applied, specifically rotation matters for this modifier. And smooth shade. I'm going to select all these boundary edges and in the side end menu, change the bevel weight to something close to one and add a bevel modifier. Change your bevel offset and the segment amount to adjust how smooth the edge is. And of course, don't do any of the bevel stuff if you're worried about geometry. Don't forget to go back and name all your objects. 
I apparently misplaced the footage for making his sideburns as well, so I'll real quick show you how to do it. I think I actually made a hairpiece, like we did for the back of his head, and then extruded sides out of it. But it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you're happy with the end result. Alright, modeling is done. And now we're ready to start texturing. Next time we'll be going over how to unwrap and bake textures to your Kakashi. Real quick, I just wanted to say... Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Love you, bye! <laughs>